substituting one word, really, to, to, to make it the Working Student Success Network. And this is an effort um, that you'll see in all the materials that we're going to go through today that very much aligns with ATD's um, uh, interest in, in absorbing this kind of more fully into, into our organizational um, mission, vision, and goals. And Communication Works has, has, has been very helpful in helping us think through a process for doing that. So we're, we're attaching some ownership to this work. And we're very excited about uh, moving forward um, with this initiative, with this new name. As you'll see in the materials that we sent out yesterday, again, we did not expect you to read through all the materials with a fine tooth comb, but to use them as a reference um, uh, to refer to as, as uh, Shep and his team walk you through these materials. Uh, including co uh, the core messaging document that, that thanks to many of you who've interacted with Chef and his team previously to add a lot of richness to, to the, the language that's included in, in, that, in those materials. Um, other materials that, that are included include talking points for a variety of different audiences, as well as the launch strategy for communications um, uh, uh, efforts on your campus to support uh, WSSN, as well as some other things that we think can help increase exposure and ultimately um, uh, attract additional students to, to receive WSSN services. So we are, we are very pleased to have Shep and his team here today to kind of walk us through these materials. And um, we look forward to, to, to hearing what, what they all have to say. And we, we hope that we'll get some great feedback um, along the way and, uh, and after. And I believe Lucia may have mentioned this, this webinar is being recorded. Um, so you can refer back to it at a later date uh, for additional details if you're missed, they're missed at this point. So, with that, I'll pass it on to first uh, Mary and, and, and take it away. Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to those of you out on the West Coast. We're very happy to be here this afternoon on, on the East Coast uh, presenting the results of the work we've been doing with uh, Achieving the Dream on WFSN since about the beginning of last year. And the work you're going to see in this presentation brings us up to date with what we've been able to accomplish during this period. Uh, the agenda for the, the presentation today uh, includes just a, the brief overview. Uh, we're going to look at messages that we developed uh, with the assistance of a, a number of folks uh, in colleges out in the field. Uh, through a period of interviews and working with other material. We're going to talk about how we develop them and go over the messages themselves. We're going to also spend some time talking about message vehicles and the way that these can be customized on your own campuses uh, for your own communications, and about the processes of raising awareness on campus uh, using communications for external visibility and with policymakers and otherwise moving forward with uh, the new materials and messages. The goals of this particular presentation are interactive. We'd like to review, primarily review and discuss the core messages that have been developed, uh, share with you some of the materials or the language for the materials that are customizable for your own use on your own campuses. Um, have a discussion about any communications challenges that you face so that we can begin to think about how we move these forward. And discuss other types of materials that could be useful uh, for activities for both internal and external visibility and promotion of your work. So I've been, this, this is Chef Rambaum speaking. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the messages and, and how they get developed and some of the concepts behind using messages of what kind of, how to build the, the best case that you can possibly build. And um, I also want to know that these messages are different. Uh, they're somewhat, a little bit different. They're modified from some of the messages that you have in your, um, they're modified from some of the messages that the message document that's there because I wanted to make it shorter and I also wanted to make it more addressed. Not just about what what um, the messages that we're going to go over are really about to help you solve the problem of how do we talk about the Working uh, Student Success Network, um, but also um, there are other.
other tools and materials that have a lot more messages that may be more customized uh, towards students and, and, and the community where you are. So um, I'm, we're just going to go through this. Um, the first thing is, uh, Julian mentioned that we have been discussing uh, uh, how people on, in some of the colleges have, have been talking about this. And um, other campuses and state partners we've had conversations with. But we've also reviewed the messages and, and message research and messages from other um, projects, other activities that are focused on building, uh, helping young, helping adult workers and young people um, get a more solid footing, uh, a more solid financial ground. So we've looked at other other organizations, things that other funders have funded. And um, we've learned a few things that, that sort of broaden the messages from what we heard from the campuses were a lot of really good equity messages and a lot of good messages about the challenges that students face. And we think that you can tell that story really well, but we're, we're trying to broaden this a little bit. And what we learned from other messages are really that, that um, you know, it, it, what the research is telling us is that not just to focus on student deficits or needs, that really it's about helping people gain finance, you know, gain solid traction towards careers and towards uh, uh, financial security in their lives. And so we want to balance. We're not saying not talk about equity at all, but we want to just make sure that some of the messages balance that because you know we have a, a population that doesn't agree about how to talk about issues, and we want to make sure that that um, every audience can hear uh, the things that resonate with them. Um, another thing that we learned is that there's a, there's a very big danger that people will see these resources that are being provided as handouts. And the, the, one of the big things that we need to get across is that students want to pay their way. You know, paying your way through school was a badge of honor for a lot of people before. But there's new research out that just came out last week that showed that half the population that we're talking about have minimum wage jobs. That if they work full time, which they don't, could only make them $15,000. So we want to make the case that it's really about the financial crunch to cover these costs. It's not about it's it's about getting them you know uh, helping them move forward with, with uh, degrees, careers, and and uh, financial. Uh, skills. And the other thing that we know is that the three pillars of uh, this initiative um, have resonance with, with different audiences. People really want to learn. There's research that shows that people are really worried. The entire population is very worried about this popul about uh, the, the group of students that you serve. They're, they're concerned that there isn't, they're not getting, um, they're not gaining traction about uh, having trouble finding work about living in their parents' homes. And so um, we, we really want to emphasize that, that this is a, a program, an initiative that, that gives them the skills and the, the support that they need to be self-sufficient and build uh, their financial security and skills. So the messages and materials that we've developed address the critical role that your colleges play. Um, what, what makes these services, what are these services, how do we talk about it, um, the, how we're going to, how this, this initiative, uh, how WSSN helps uh, students gain the traction that they need for, for careers and, and, and work, as well as uh, financial uh, uh, success. And then, but also there's other issues that come, that emerge through the messages about the need to balance academic and non-academic services, both are needed. It's not either or. Um, the benefits of the increased services, what, what people might expect would happen that's happened on some of your campuses. And some issues that the funders are, are want to be sure that we get across about what's unique. One of the things that they're particularly concerned about, and I, and I think it's important, is that this isn't just about this generation of students. It's also about their children and building for the next generation. And then the other thing is the messages address a lot of issues about um, uh, what, what, what we want to ask people to do to help. Um, you know, what can you talk to people in your community about? What can you know, businesses and, and uh, civic groups? And, and also, um, you know, what, what, what can you say to policymakers and, and things like that? 
um, in, in doing the messages, we also realized that we don't have everything. I mean, I couldn't tell a lot of stories because the stories are going to come from you. And um, so also some data that you have that, about the needs of the students. We, you know, um, the needs are, are exactly how many, how much, how, what kinds of services you're providing and who's being, who's being helped and how. Um, and, and how the, there's also, um, in the next several months, we also want to sort of get a bigger snapshot picture of, you know, 19 institutions across four states. You know, uh, what kind of difference are we making? And we'll, we, you may need some help just telling that story a little bit. Um, so um, and and talking about messages, I mean, I, I want to make clear what messages are and why, why they're important. Um, uh, the, the, the Republican pollster Frank Luntz once said that messages are what people remember when they leave the room. And I think that's a pretty good way. We want, when you talk about these programs, we want people to we, we want them to walk away with a, an understanding that stays in their mind. So we want to make it simple. We want to make it important to them. And um, we want to ask for their help. But, but we also want to do uh, a number of things. And, and this um, communications, uh, developing messaging is often built on a pyramid where we need information to explain what the problem is in, in simple terms. We need to show that this is not an unsolvable problem. We're taking action and we have a solution. We need to capture a little bit about the common sense about why we're doing this and what this does. And we need to tell specific attributes about what's going on. That in this case, that it, you know, we're trying to make services convenient. We're, we're um, bundling service. Those are attributes about this. But they're not all the only message. We also need to capture a little bit about the misconceptions that people have about who these students that we're serving are, about the colleges themselves, and about this initiative that people may have you know, the wrong idea about things. We, we want to avoid that. Um, but there's also higher level messages that, that really get people excited. And one is an emotional appeal that often comes from telling stories about people that have benefited. But there's also a higher va value benefit about you know, how, this, how this efforts like this can, can really tap into the values that people have most, what, what's, what really uh, people care about that's part of uh, their own ethos about hard work, the values of equity, the values of, um, and so we, we talk about, I have some examples of that that could be used. And also we mentioned before making, asking people for, for help. So the first thing, um, it didn't, oh, there it is, okay. So the first thing is, you know, what is the need that we're solving? And we tried to sort of narrow this down a little bit. First of all, we start off by saying that, that you're part of an important effort because um, the fact that you have been selected to be one of 19 colleges can have some, some value in your communities, that you're, you know, there's over 1,000 community colleges in the country, but you've been singled out for, for a particular reason. But we also want to just sort of paint a picture of why, why we need to help students gain traction to credentials and financial security. So some of that has to do with um, just the populations that you serve, that these students, you know, they look, they, they're looking to work. They, they don't have wealthy parents or students. They typically don't take loans to pay their way, but they have, too, have to work too hard for too little to be able to pay for school. So we want to cite the data about, you know, $15,000. This isn't enough to, to pay for tuition to pay for their family needs and all of that that they're working on. There's other ways of talking about this, but this is a simple way. And that the challenges that they face can, can make it really uh, put them on a treadmill, make it hard for them to gain traction and you know, to, to continue to stay in place. And anyway, so there's more material. A lot of the material talks about the challenges. The message document that we have has a page and a half of different ways of talking about this. Um, so beyond the need, um, what, what's the solution? And this is sort of an expanded version of the way we've been talking, the way uh, the funders have been talking about this from the beginning. You'll recognize the three bullets. Um, you know, we, we just want to give you language that you can use to, to talk about it. And you know, the idea is that you can build on this. 
um, under each area of what you're doing, you can talk more specifically about what's happening about employment, about how, how you're helping academically, the income and work supports, and then the financial services. So we just wanted to give you a clear frame for, for talking about that. We just built this out a little bit. Um, so the other thing is, uh, what are the reasons behind this? Why, why are we doing this? Why, why this approach? And what we're saying is that working adults and new students are seeking secure credentials and skills that will help them get a foothold in today's economy. And we're focusing on student and family sustainability, but it's essential to graduation rates. And vice versa, paying attention to the academics is also important. And it's not an either or, which I mentioned before. And that um, at a time when, when the colleges are being asked to do more with less, this helps. This isn't the only answer, but it helps focus on pooling resources, bundling services, and collaborating more efficiently, drawing more from the community and what's, what's out there that can, that can help. And we want to emphasize that as part of it. Now, you know, there's things that you're saying. Please add some of the things that have been effective for you. But these are some core things that we also think can be added. So the other thing is, I mentioned that there's attributes. There are certain things that when you talk about this, you're going to want to mention. This is how we do it. This is some of the key elements of how this works. So one is that it's convenient, that it offers students the help that they need when they need it most. That it, it's also looking beyond purely academic indicators for student success, because those aren't the only indicators. They're absolutely crucial. Uh, but, but there are other things that we need to look at. And we have to talk about how we're bundling services and why that's important, and um, that it's a shared responsibility, that everybody needs to be involved in this. It's not just on the student's back. You know, it's the whole campus working together. And these are abbreviated. Like I say, that the, the, it, there's far more in, in the document. Um, and then but, you know, that it's important to focus that it requires crossing boundaries and working in new ways. And we also want to get across the benefits of higher retention rates, low, lower student, student debt to income ratios, um, building a stronger infrastructure for community support. Some of these are very objective that can be measured. And some of the colleges like uh, you know, Spark Point and San Mateo has just great data that, that you, know, you can learn from how, what the kind of data that they're collecting and that achieving the dream you know, is, is working with you to do. Um, so anyway. Um, and then there's research behind this. It's not just this is something that's been working, and we know what happens from bundling that, that makes a difference. So here's some of the information about that that we've gathered. So there's also misconceptions that need to be addressed. And I, I don't want to spend a lot of time going through, through this. I, I, I think that a lot of the material that we've developed has language that you can use that, that addresses some of these things. But you know, we, we, a lot of people don't really get the idea that people who've been to four-year colleges don't understand. I mean, the, the, you're working in the heart of your community. And I think some of the people that you know know a lot about who you are, but some don't. And so you know, also, there's concern that some people may think that you know, these, who are these students? You know, why, are they, why should we be helping them? And we really need to paint a picture that they're not just uh, kids that are going to, you know, they're, they're not just kids that have, um, they're not just young people, they're returning workers who are getting retrained. You, you know all this stuff. So let me just keep going. Um, we also have, uh, this is really important, um, a lot of messaging that gets done, there's no way to talk about something larger that, that, that makes people sort of connect with this. And so, you know, we just tried to come up with some words, some ways of talking about this. And so um, some of these have been tested, some of them haven't. But, you know, we want to strengthen the community within community college, the community within your building, within, within your campus, the community with it that, that you relate to. So um, this is about community. It's about building a better community that works for everybody and, and that addresses those that, that, whose needs have been, not, that's not, uh, have been neglected. Uh, we're helping working students of all ages build new skills to rebuild the middle class. Um, rebuilding the middle class is a, a way that a lot of people have talked about this, particularly with policymakers, that, that is effective. Um, it's just something to, to think about. Um, we're offering more than hope. The idea is that it, you know, this is a, a program that gives real skills um, that, that, that can allow people who are going back to improve their lives, get meaningful con credentials, 
and support their families and, and become great assets for their community. And I mentioned earlier that it's about the next generation of students. We want to get that across, that it's not just about the workers and, and the, the first generation uh, new students to, to college. Um, so the other thing is that it, it's, it's also giving, we want to emphasize about the financial savvy and career experience. It's not just enough to walk away with a degree. We want to help them uh, put them on, on solid ground. There's a little bit of repetition in some of this. And one of the things that messages do is try to focus people on uh, some core points. Um, so um, I just want to take a few minutes and, and just start uh, talking with you a little bit about what, what are some of the messages that have been really effective that you've used on your campus. And I'm also curious about what your reactions to, to some of these uh, things that we've put in front of you to, uh, in a simple uh, simple package. Um, so we, it might be a good time to break for some questions. So um, everyone, once again, if you have a question or if you would like to share um, some of the messaging that you guys have used on your campus, if you want to raise your hand, I can unmute your line and you can um, share with a group. Um, you're also more than welcome to type the question um, and I can go ahead and read it out. So, Chef, would you mind repeating the question that you posted? So, I guess there's two questions. One is, what, what messages have you used that have been effective on your campus and, and talking to the key audiences that you need to reach? And then, and then the other thing would be uh, just some reactions to these, you know, are there things that we're missing or things that you think, I mean, we have a lot of other messages, but I, you know, I just want to know what your general reaction is. So um, Craig is going to talk a little bit about the, the guts of, you know, you have all this material in front of you, and Craig's going to walk you through what it is, uh, what it's intended to do, and, um, and you know, what we hope that you might be able to use it for. Thanks, Seb. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and uh, we'll try and get into a little bit more of the concrete materials here and, and get your reaction to those. Um, as uh, Julian and Chef said, you know, a lot of things were sent to you, and we're, we're not expecting that you've had a chance to, to look through them all, but we want to give you a sense of, of what, what you have in front of you um, and also um, let you know that we really see these documents as living materials, um, and, and we were, we're very interested in your feedback on those um, and, and figuring out how we can make them most useful to you. Obviously, we're trying to provide you with some general um, documents um, that, that you can you can then use appropriately on your campus. So uh, in the documents that were sent yesterday, yeah, yesterday, right, yesterday, um, you'll, you'll see uh, the ones that are listed here on the screen. Um, first off, there's a, a, a pretty in-depth uh, frequently asked question document. It's seven or eight pages long. Um, we focus on what we think are the kind of core questions that are going to be asked about uh, the initiative. Um, but we may have missed some, so if there's things that you see there that you think we, we need to build out, we're interested in seeing that. We also assume that you'll be adding to that document. If there are common FAQs that you're going to have that are going to that are going to come up in your state or in your community on your campus. Um, so we're trying to get at the core the core questions in that document. Uh, the second set of documents that that you'll see um, we think are probably uh, the most useful documents in the packet. Um, these are talking points for key audiences that you're going to you're going to be dealing with students, faculty and staff, policymakers, and community leaders. Um, and uh, and the idea here is that we've taken the messaging platform and we've really tried to drill down and hone those messages in um, for those particular audiences. Um, and this is. Chef talked about trying to deal with some of the misconceptions that are out there. This, these are documents that are going to try and help um, address some of those misconceptions as well. So we're very interested in you spending some time with those documents um, and, and letting us know whether or not those types of talking points um, seem appropriate for the audiences. Um, and if we're missing any audiences or we're missing any key, 
pieces from your experience on the ground, we, we certainly want to know that as well. Uh, over on the right side of the screen here, you see some things that are more oriented towards uh, promotion of the uh, initiative. Um, you have two documents uh, in, in, the, in the packet that was sent yesterday, a customizable brochure and a PowerPoint. Those are both, what you have right now is the text for those. Uh, we are waiting for some last minute logo and branding issues here and now that we have that, we will be actually uh, creating that brochure and that PowerPoint in a, in a template that you can use. Um, the PowerPoint is really meant to be kind of a base document that will help you present what the initiative is. That could be used on campus. It could be used with uh, community partners. Um, and again, we tried to construct it in such a way that you can easily add in things that are campus specific um, and you can you know, mix and match uh, slides from, from what's going on on your campus with, with what we have there. Um, Shep also talked about um, campus profiles. We've, we've already worked with five or six campuses to develop uh, profiles um, about what's going on, what successes they've had on campus. There's a lot of good work that's already being done out there, obviously. Um, uh, you know, and ATD is very interested in building out those profiles, and so uh, we'll be back to you about how we might be able to help and assist um, and build those pro help you build those profiles on campus. Um, and also share those those profiles back and forth among campuses um, as a learning tool, um, and also so we're not reinventing the wheel all the time, we're trying to give a little economy at scale here um, on those as well. Um, lastly, in terms of vehicles and student stories, I'm going to uh, put a, a marker down on that, and we're going to talk about that um, uh, in, a, in a minute when we talk about building campus awareness. Um, but that's, that's an overview of the, the vehicles that were sent yesterday and what you have there. Um, and and then I know I've said it a couple times here, but obviously we're very interested in whether or not um, those look like they're going to be useful to you and, and um, what would need to change in them to make them more useful if you, if you can bear changes. Um, in addition, there's obviously a, a host of potential other documents um, that, uh, you know, that could be produced. Um, Shep, if you can move down one slide. Um, um, these are just some other possible ideas, um, and they really are, you know, kind of a, a wide range of ideas. There might be materials that are more focused on a particular student group, say Latino groups. Uh, you might feel like, you know, we need more uh, visuals or infographics, something that's going to, you know, catch the attention of people. Um, so we're, we're curious um, about. I guess two questions here on these slides. One is, does the core set of documents that I outlined um, seem like they're going to be useful to you? Do those seem like the right types of things? If not, what else could you use? And, uh, and, and are any of these possible vehicles that we have listed here um, something that you'd be interested um, in seeing resources in? Um, so I'm going to, do you have any? No, okay. So I'm going to I'm going to keep going, but if you've got reactions or questions to those, um, uh, it'd be it'd be helpful, and Lucia can just interrupt us here and, and let us know if there's a question. Um, we also want to talk about raising awareness on campus. Uh, the last document that was in the packet that I want to talk about um, was entitled a, a, a launch strategy memo. Um, a couple caveats on that. Um, one is we understand that a lot of you are past launching. Um, you're already well into the work on your campus. Um, and so this was really designed to be kind of a baseline set of activities that could be used. Um, but just because it says launch doesn't mean that there might not be uh, useful information in there um, that could be used in an ongoing way. Um, and it's really meant to be kind of a laundry list of ideas. Uh, the second kind of caveat is you obviously know what's, what's going to work best on your campus. Not all campuses are the same, um, and again, so you, you can kind of pick and choose from these. But there's a, a host of ideas there. You can see um, a short list of those on the screen, uh, including ideas for uh, building out social media uh, work around the initiative, uh, events that can be held on campus um, that could be oriented at faculty or staff or students. Uh, working with organizations on campus, um, or simply just having open houses and job fairs or, uh, that incorporates this into it. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, there might be kind of more visual uh, type of things that could be done as a way to uh, draw attention to this. 
Um, and really the, the key thing that we're trying to get at here is to try and find ways to really engage students um, and really then pull out their stories. Uh, because student stories um, is really, we feel, is probably one of the most powerful uh, vehicles that you have. If, if you have students who can tell their stories and how they've succeeded and how they've become part of the community, um, that's going to that's going to carry over to their peers, um, and that's also going to be, uh, you know, very good in terms of talking with policymakers and whatnot about the success of the of the program. Um, you know, when we've talked with some of the campuses. We've heard um, that there are there can often be a, a reluctance on the part of students to talk about using these services, and this is kind of back to that idea of well, it's a handout, and, and I don't want to talk about needing extra help or special services. Um, but I think as one of the one of the presidents that we talked with said, you know, who hasn't needed help in their life? Everyone needs help, um, and and so we want to try and also kind of normalize this as a way of going through. Community college. This isn't something special. This is something that a large, vast, a vast majority of students are going to benefit from. Um, we obviously want to help low-income students and students of color, but this is going to impact a lot of people, and we want to make this a normal part of of the, of the campus activity. And and having it visible on campus and having students talk about that is a really uh, a really good way to make that happen. So. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Shep, and he's going to uh, talk about um, some external communication. So um, the first thing is I want to talk a little bit about connecting with the community. That um, you have a lot of part of this work is to build relationships with financial service companies, with bus services, with housing agencies and all that and you know, we just think every opportunity you can you know honor your partners and um, and find ways of you know um, you know mentioning that uh, talking about their help that because what we also want to do is over time it would be helpful uh, to expand the number of partners and so by um, continually uh, going into the community and talking to organizations and uh, uh, briefings with with the business community, with with the political leaders in the in the community, with with organizations that provide social services. Um, you know, it's a way of, of bringing in new sponsors and, and more support, and also um, you know really helping the, the people that are helping you feel like they they, they are appreciated. And, and so there's part of that. And so some of the materials that we we Develop. We're hoping that you can use, like the PowerPoint, and also the a brochure. That you can actually share that with with some of these groups when you and, and be a reason to. If you did a presentation, you would have materials and tools. You may have some things already, but they can add to your arsenal of, of, of what you're uh, doing. Um, so the other thing is, um, we want to. There are ways of using this to get attention for the institution in the media. But it's not just about um, it's not just about you know the good things that you're doing on campus. It's also a way of encouraging more people in the community to get involved, and uh, it's real. In many cases, it's it's real news um, that you know uh, you've done new thing, a new way of serving students, a new way of helping to address that issue of what happens to the the uh, returning worker or young uh, uh, new college. Uh, for somebody who just finished high school and trying to make their way. Um, so there are things that you can do, but we also we want to make it very clear that there are professionals on your campus that work with the media all the time. This isn't just your responsibility, um, but that you should probably talk to people in the public information office, or hopefully some of them are on this call, that there are ways of telling this story that, that can com connect with uh, uh, the holiday season that connect with new research that comes out that that can show what's happening of how the community and the the uh, college are working together. Um, you can also talk about the challenges that young people you're you're experts on the challenges that young people face. So you can uh, create op-ed pieces um, that also show what's happening and 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 say that that this is just the beginning. That we you know hopefully we can uh, more more community partners and and. Um, 
you know, will help serve more students. Uh, and, and also that you should share stories through social media and the website. The other thing is that it would be helpful to train spokespeople to have a group of students, faculty, and staff that can talk to the media to carry the message, share their stories, and also sort of have a, a way that where it's a kind of disciplined way where you're talking about this that these uh, the, the, your spokespeople can really understand what this what this is, but it's not just the campus officials that do that, but also you know uh, faculty members, uh, your uh, the uh, staff and, and particularly students. And you know there are some things that could be done right away. You know, it, it, you know some of your state partners are doing some of these things for you with the state leaders, but uh, even local officials or whatever, um, you can send a letter just explaining what this initiative is and invite them to come by and see what this looks like in action, or or to speak to students, you know, or uh, just to know about it, uh, because there are some policy changes that, if we want to scale this up or uh, provide more resources to you, it can be very helpful. And you know, the brochure that we've done, um, you know, could be used as a mailing to, to reach out to some of these with your additions, and you could this could be a way of uh, working with some of your state partners to do briefings for the state leaders uh, and some of the key committees that, that you may want to be involved in. Um, so um, that's really the core content of what we wanted to present. We have some other slides that are strategic slides that are really like an appendix. They show you how we basically came up with some of the, the messaging, that the message lines that we have, what the audiences were, what their needs are, some strategies of communication, and some of the core messages. These are, you know, we don't need to go over these now, but I just wanted you to see that, that you know, that we developed this to address some of the, the big challenges that, that, that are there for different audiences. And um, so um, with that, uh, I think we, you know, we really do want to talk with you about, um, about some of the challenges that you face, some thoughts that you may have, you know, any challenge, communication challenges that we might be able to help with, some, some thoughts that you have, um, you know, uh, what you think, you know, whether whether these materials sort of get at some of the needs that you have, um, you know, we just like to hear more. Just wanted to let you know is that you'll be receiving. You know, we, we should have a brochure. We would love to hear from you, and um, uh, we can send an email out to the participant uh, with information about how they can, or you can funnel the information through 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 you, Julian, or through or Lucia. Um, so, we, if you have some reactions to the material, these aren't written in stone. We can make some changes if there's things that you notice that that you're curious about. Oh, there's a question. We're starting to have a few questions funnel in. Um, so one of the questions is, um, are there samples of other brochures or marketing materials that have been developed? Um, so the, the brochure, we have a brochure in there that we developed. But I think one of the things that we're also looking at is colleges themselves have been creating material. This program has been around for, and it would be helpful to share material across uh, across colleges. So one of the things that we want to do is gather gather newspaper stories that you that that have hap that, that that have been uh, uh, posted. Gather some of the social media tools that you've used. And you know what we produce for you is one thing, but what you produce can be borrowed very easily by other campuses with the language and so. And it's we're just trying to make this really helpful. So what we want to add that's a question that we really have for you. And if that's the case, we want to funnel them uh, back to achieving the dream so that we can share them, but also that we can also use some of that stuff that maybe we can help produce for other people or that you can produce uh, 
uh, amongst yourselves. So, in addition, check the brochure. Text has been developed, but it, it hasn't been. Designed. Yeah, but the brochure text is developed, and we're going to be designing that in the next few weeks. So, in the next several weeks, you'll you'll receive the brochure and also a, a finished PowerPoint presentation that we just need to to put in. Uh, we just we just need to design. Um, um, absolutely, and uh, just to follow up on um, Chef's answer, what we have, um, I guess for some of you that are on base camp currently, um, I believe North Arkansas not too long ago posted a um, article where they were featured in the local media. Um, that was something that was really great that was, you know, shared on base camp. So um, we would encourage you all, if there are some really great materials that you all have developed or um, any local media um, pickups that you guys have gotten on the work. Um, we believe Basecamp would be a, a great location for you all um, to share with, with your colleagues. Um, so another question that uh, keeps, keeps coming up is, what was the purpose behind the name change from WFSN to WSSN? Sure, it's a great question. Um, I think, I think the primarily, um, it was to make it, uh, uh, I guess, we didn't want it to be a misnomer that it was only focused on families. <clears throat> and as much as families are a critical part of this, as Shep mentioned, and it just being kind of focused on the entire family, that it's a two-generational approach that we're promoting, um, it is the theory of change kind of begins with supporting uh, students. Um, and, and the better we're able to support students, the better they're able to, to achieve their academic and professional goals, and presumably, um, a, 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 achieve jobs with family sustaining wages to support their families and and I guess uh, support um, uh, generations future generations to attend college and and, uh, and 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 achieve their professional goals so that that's that's very briefly kind of our thinking behind it um, and that that is going from the working family success network and there's and, and there, another consideration is as you'll see kind of at the sub um, the sub heading there uh, an affiliate of the work, the National Working Family Success Network. We wanted to uh, distinguish our work from the national group, uh, which is comprised of, of other organizations doing like work, like LISC, like United Way, and others. So, one distinguishing our work, um, but but very much aligned with the work of the National uh, Leadership Committee, but also kind of emphasizing the student the student component in WSSN. So that's that's kind of the brief answer. Okay, great. Thanks, Julian. So another question that we have is um, whether there's been an emphasis to use um, other languages, uh, for example, Spanish, to educate um, communities on this work? I mean, I think that that's something that we need to, to know what, what the, the size of the need would be. I mean, some of this material could be translated. Um, that's something we could do, I mean, we can think about doing. Um, but also, I would like to hear more about um, what the need is. I mean, Craig gave a pretty big list of things that, that might be needed in the, in the next round. And, um, you know, we'd like to hear more about um, if that is perceived as a significant need and what other, other needs that, that you might have. So, you know, that's something we will pay, you know, we need to pay attention to. Clearly, your campus, you know, educates significant groups of uh, different groups of diverse groups of students so um, that's something we need to pay attention to absolutely that's a great question and um, if uh, for some of the colleges that are interested in this if you could contact me or Julian and let us know um, of the need um, or any requests that you have to really translate um, translate some of these materials it, it would be helpful for us to know so we can get work started on that I think it would also be helpful. This is correct. It would also be helpful if there is a need, if the if there's a a content need there as well as a translation need. Um, I think too often we see materials that are written in general and they're written in English, then they say, we we translate those as if that's just that's going to do the trick. Um, so you know, is it is it a is it a translation issue only, or is it a translation and a content issue that needs to be addressed? Yeah, absolutely, and that's a really great point to bring up. And um, thank you to uh, Karen for, for also following up and, and saying that it would be helpful, given that 
the California colleges are um, HSIs. So um, thank you for, uh, for bringing that up. Um, moving on, we have um, another question. Could we get an anticipated delivery date for the brochures and PowerPoint? Uh, my guess is it'll be um, probably around before the end of the year, but maybe sooner. Um, I mean, this doesn't take, it may not take that long. So I don't want to, uh, I just need to talk to the designer. It could be done sooner. Um, the PowerPoint probably could be done in the next couple weeks. Um, Actually, because well, uh, we will get back to you on that very quickly, and we'll give you a firm date of when you can, because I know that there's probably immediate uses that you might have. We'll try to accelerate that. Great. Um, so I'm not seeing any uh, new questions pop up, but there was a comment. Um, essentially, thank you. Um, this helps to man uh, to manage the messages in our state. So uh, thank you, Chef, for. Um, providing oh, PowerPoint. Uh, Mary, uh, so one more thing that I just wanted to say, it's not a, a major uh, deal, but you'll notice on the bottom of the, the slide that says confidential, do not distribute. And that goes with for all of the, the material. We want you to use this with your teams, with within the campus, within, you know, uh, use it as, use this as broadly as you wish. But this is not a public document. We want you to keep this, and but, it's and it's still in process. So. Uh, keep this close to the vest, but but use it, and use it across. You know, share it with the people on that you're working with. So, just to clarify, you're talking about the the, the presentation, just this, this specific yes. presentation. Yes. Okay, I just right. wanted to clarify that yes, so. all of the other documents that were provided um, are are yours yours to use and use and adapt uh, as as needed. So, um, thank you for thank you for that, Chef. Yeah. So uh, we we actually do have um, another question. Um, in the context of WSSN as part of the overall student success efforts at the colleges, should the colleges customize communications to demonstrate how and why WSSN is essential to promoting, to promoting and supporting student success? Well, I think, you know, uh, Julian may want to comment after me, but to me, this is what your colleges are all about. And so just as just, just as uh, Julian mentioned that achieving the dream is going to try to make it more a part of its uh, national efforts to uh, help colleges integrate the services and, and provide comprehensive supports, um, we think that, that it's really helpful to use this as it may be a useful vehicle to show the integration of, of the work that's being done on your campus connecting the academic and the, the student supports together. And that um, so we think that it, it can be a way you can use this. Now, one of the things that we talked about was that the, you don't have to use the name WSSN. You know, I think that was part of the agreement that, that you, know, you have the names of your, but we want you to talk about what you're doing as a, as a vehicle that the college is using to go to the next level. And I think Julian may want to say more. Yeah, I would, I would say to that, to that comment um, question, uh, abs absolutely yes. I think that is, that is a, a great indicator of uh, culture change uh, on a campus, uh, the extent to which that kind of the, the, the messaging of WSSN is embedded or integrated into a larger student success strategy is, is absolutely what, what, what we hope uh, will happen with, 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 the, with the documents and with the language that we've provided. Um, changing one letter in the, in the initiative will not fundamentally change the work that you all are doing, as Shep kind of alluded to. Um, it, is, it is kind of the core of, of what you all are working on. Um, and the more that is part of the, the narrative of the institution, and I would say a shared narrative of, of faculty, staff, at, uh, across and, and other stakeholders across the institution and external stakeholders, I think that the easier it will be to promote and um, and, and scale. Uh, I think the language and the messaging is critical for the sustainability of this work to the extent that uh, staff and faculty and other stakeholders can be armed with with the language to talk about it easily and talk about it passionately and advocate for the work. So, I would I would agree with 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 that comment uh, slash question um, uh, completely. 
So Armeta, I see that your hand is raised. I'm going to go ahead and unmute your line. If you can go ahead and make sure that um, your line is also unmuted, I'll go ahead and let you ask um, the question that you have. Armeta, you should be unmuted now. I wonder, Armeta, do you make sure that your phone is unmuted also? If, if you were muted, I guess. Oh, okay. So um, I'll go ahead and ask ask the question. Uh, the question um, Armeta had is, do you plan to provide any marketing ideas around access to public benefits and how to normalize this access to student populations? Um, there's a second round of work. You know, we have to figure out how what, what the, we're going to do in the next round. And uh, that could be very well in the mix of things. Um, uh, that's pretty important function and we need to find a way to help you do that yeah yeah I would I would, uh, I would agree and I think that we'll be uh, moving forward kind of identifying as we learn more about some of the communication uh, opportunities and challenges the campuses are facing how to cut kind of customize our support for those campuses uh, public benefits access being um, one of them and these other sticky issues that students may not volunteer um, this is it boils down to it being kind of um, uh, behavior change uh, and how you market and message using different language. There's a behavioral economics component to to this work uh, and how we market and message um, to students. So that will certainly be, I think, uh, we'll certainly do our best to align um, our efforts to support college by college with their marketing and expansion efforts. Great. Uh, so John, I see that you also have your hand raised. I'm going to go ahead and uh, unmute your line at this time. Well, actually, John. yeah, actually, I, I've asked my question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, I'm glad we got you covered. I'm going to go ahead and um, mute you again. Excellent. So I, I don't see that we have any more hands raised at this time. Um, if you have any more questions, um, please let us know. Um, and if you don't have a question at this time, and maybe once you've had time to review the materials, um, please do not hesitate to uh, contact either Julian or myself. Um, I believe we will also be providing uh, the emails for Shep, Mary, and Craig, who presented on today's webinar, if you have any questions that you would like to ask uh, directly to, to Shep and his team. Great. Yeah, I just want to say thank you again to, to Shep and his team for, for producing these materials, uh, to the colleges who certainly helped uh, lend a hand in, in developing these materials. Um, as Craig mentioned, as he went through the FAQs, talking points, customizable brochure, PowerPoint, campus profiles, student stories, these are, these are all, this is kind of the beginning of what we're, we want to get some more feedback from you all on and how we can be as helpful as possible. Um, so if you have questions, as Lucia mentioned, please please let us know. Uh, th these materials are meant to help you um, kind of uh, build, I guess, increase momentum for the work that you all have already been working very hard on on your campuses. And uh, to the extent we can help you all kind of present a uni unified voice across the consortium would be even more powerful in uh, the sustainability of this work um, uh, and, the, and the scaling of this work. So. Uh, without further ado, I think we can. Is there one more question? Actually, there is one more question. More, I'll, just keep, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> which is, which is perfect because these questions, uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying all the questions that are coming today. Um, one of the questions is I'm curious as to um, what review you might want um, or may be helpful for the colleges or state partners or facilitators. Um, should they provide any feedback or, or really like to modify the materials? Uh, no, it, it, this is not fine. We have some time. That's one of the reasons why I was hesitating about how soon we can get. Um, the, Craig said that these are living documents. We we can make changes. You know, we we want to make this useful, and um, we've already gone through many rounds of edits. So uh, one more round, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. But also, it's important to capture your perspective. Now, I just want to say though, and and just be very clear, what we're trying to do is help you talk about what this effort is. There's a lot of things that you're doing that you need to add yourself. And so we, we, we trying to create a picture, you know, just at a, a higher uh, a picture of what, what, um, what this is. 
and and give you language because you know uh, language that that broadens you know that, that talks about equity but that also talks about um, some of the things that the funders are concerned about about making sure that students really do uh, gain attraction and and get a get a solid foothold and and and, and uh, in, in moving forward with their lives. So uh, so please, as detailed as you want, I mean, I, it would be very helpful uh, to tell us, you know, are there things that you just think are wrong that you don't like? It would be very helpful if you have other language that you think could add value to this um, that we might be able to, to get across. And, um, and we want to collect stories. We want to, because this stuff doesn't come to life. And, and it doesn't rise without making this real and personal. And so we, we need some of that for the future. I don't know that it's going to go into these core things, but the next round of materials will do that. And we also need data and information about proof that this stuff works, because we're trying to build support for this and, and raise more money to bring on more colleges and provide more services and support for you. So all of that, all of that is good, and and just sit, mark it up, and, and send it back, and we'll try to reflect a lot of what we what we can do. Excellent. So this is a question. Um, I think maybe Julian, you would be able to answer this. Um, has WSSN looked at having a national spokesperson for the initiative? Um, we have we have not looked at having, I guess, one national spokesperson for the initiative. Um, I think I think in thinking about achieving the dreams role, there's certainly we want to uh, kind of provide as many resources to the colleges as possible, such that um, it becomes a homegrown initiative uh, that can that has the, the greatest chance of being sustained over time, <clears throat> and that our role is to to help the colleges do that. Uh, through that process, I imagine there will be a number of spokespeople that 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 naturally arise from the colleges that we will turn to and ask them to. Uh, as we've done to date, um, post things on base camp, be it promising practices or innovations on the on the ground that they that they would like to share with the consortium. Um, uh, identifying spokespeople from the colleges to be spotlighted during Dream, our national conference that happens annually with more than 2,000 students, uh, more than 2,000 participants, <clears throat> and other in in state learning events. I think we'll be turning to the colleges as as the content experts, really, in how this work is being implemented. Uh, beyond ATD's role is helping to manage the expansion. So I think moving forward, um, there will certainly be a role, uh, certainly on um, uh, Karen Stout, our president, uh, to say the least, on her radar as being a, as being a, a huge initiative for, for ATD. And naturally, she will talk about it, as others will. But I think increasingly, as I mentioned, we will turn to the folks who know the work the best on the ground, who are implementing the work, um, from the staff, faculty, to the boards of trustees and presidents in, in the 19 colleges. So. That is that is uh, that is my answer. It's a great question, and I think we'll, we'll have more info moving forward about what that could look like. But we'll ask you to help shape up what that might look like. Excellent. So we have um, another question. I think this is more of a clarifying question on the access to public benefits that was posed earlier. Um, I guess when when speaking about when the messaging for public benefits access would be available would be available in round two. Um, the question is. When might the colleges expect this information as we are well into year two of the grant? Uh, I understand that I'm, I'm talking about my calendar. I'm sorry. It's a, uh, we've only been at this for a little while. And we, we just need to work this out. It, it seems like there's a huge interest in this and marketing messages. But I, I, have to, I, I have to talk to Julian and sort out what really uh, what, what's viable under the support that we can provide. Yeah. I would say in the interim, um, there are colleges across the consortia that have identified some great ways of marketing public benefits access, and they've been doing this longer. They're not brand new to it, and they've got some promising practices. So I would, I would ask, um, and I've, I'll probably be reaching out specifically to the colleges that I that I know have some of these uh, marketing and communications uh, around public benefits currently in place to share those in the interim, and then we can follow up with the more formalized, um, some more form formalized. Uh, messaging uh, for the colleges that need some more support. But um, I think I'll first draw on our, our consortia, and then, and then as Shep and I uh, develop our timeline for additional um, uh, work products, we can, we'll roll those out as they're, as they're finalized and keep you updated. So. Great. 
So um, it's been a few minutes now since we received our last question. So should we just be quiet for a little bit? <laughs> and wait for them to come we can use that strategy. Um, so once again, if there are any final questions um, that you all may have, please let us know. Um, we'd be happy to to continue this conversation. And while we're waiting, I just wanted to thank everybody. We were just blown away by some of the stories that we heard of what was happening on the campuses. Uh, the way that you're tracking what students are doing, the way you're sharing information. We thought it was going to be a, a very difficult process to reach every student, but you're obviously uh, embedded so many of the uh, ways of communicating into the, the regular workings of the campus that we were really, really impressed. And and also about the enthusiasm and 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 uh, and, and really powerful advocacy that that. Uh, we saw across the campuses that we talked to. Great. Well, I think we're I think we're set. Um, so I'll, I'll thank everyone again. And uh, again, this will be this has this we did record this, so we will be we'll be sending out the recording for um, members of your team and others on your campus that would like to uh, view in uh, this webinar. Uh, we really appreciate your time today, and please contact with further questions as you go through the materials. And we look forward to following up with more information. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. Um, please uh, be on the lookout for a follow-up email, as Julian said, with the webinar information. And for those of you um, who maybe didn't have access to the materials um, earlier today, I have since posted them on Basecamp, and that's where they will be housed moving forward. Thanks, everyone.